I Didn't Raise My Boy to Be a Soldier by Ty Carey Read by Claire Mullen Why does the sun still shine? Why does it shine still in my darkness? When I think of all the happy memories I have of you, the sun always seems to be shining. Yet you are gone, and the sun remains. I sit here in my wicker chair on the porch, watching the mountains. In my grief, it even seems as if the misty Appalachians are weeping with me. This is where I nursed you, where I used to tell you stories, where you first picked up the fiddle, and where we spent many a happy evening singing to the stars. Now I just sit here in stormy contemplation, too fragile to move, wondering if you were among the angels looking down upon me, me, your mother, and smiling that beautiful smile. Or maybe you're crying with me. Maybe even after death we can still feel pain. I often watch you grow up over and over again in my head. Try not to think of you, dead, upon a battlefield. Yet it always ends the same way, with a plain wooden cross in France, marked Johnny Williams. Sweet memories turn sour, knowing that you'll never get to be the kind gentleman you could have been. You're like a flower, cut before it has even bloomed. The sun shone upon us with bright yellow determination as we stood upon the porch on that fatal day in October 1917 when you bid me farewell. You told us not to worry and that you'd be returning almost just as soon as you were gone. Why was I such a fool as to believe you? You were 18. You were still a child, really. It must have been the uniform, or maybe it was the glare of the sun. Perhaps it was my short-sightedness which made you appear a fully grown man. You stood in front of me, a gangly warrior in khaki green. I had polished your boots so meticulously the night before that their shimmering in the autumnal sun could have blinded a man. Every inch of you brave, every inch courageous, every inch American. I stood, smiling like a fool, with tears running proudly down my cheek. Those tears have such a different meaning now. Then, just as you were about to walk through the gate for the last time, who came up the road but Polly Smith? Her long, plaited blonde hair was flailing in the air, and she was wearing a floral dress of the most innocent shade of blue. A huge smile on her face. Your childhood sweethearts. She was your first love. Just gone sixteen, and the prettiest girl. You had been sneaking out to see her at night, and you thought I didn't know. She came running over to tell you that her father had finally given her permission to marry, and by the time you marched to the trenches, you were engaged, your cheek armed with her snowdrop kiss. Would the sun have shone on your wedding day? You would have made such a good husband and such a loving father. Every evening since you left, Polly came to visit me. We would sit by the fire, reading your letters over and over, and sewing her wedding dress. It took us so long to make. Polly would often say, We must work quicker. He'll be home any day now. But of course, you didn't return. We worked on it until no more could possibly be added. It must have been the most beautiful wedding dress ever made. The purest dove-like cotton, paired with snowy lace so white, even the sun couldn't melt it. I can just see her, 
gliding through the old village church to meet you at the altar. The veil that my mother-in-law gave me is draped like a spider web over her face. You were dressed in your father's wedding suit, and I am truly proud, truly proud, this time for love, not for hate. By the light of the moon, our little barn will be Mount Olympus, and they'll hear music and dancing from miles around. Joy will be spread across the somber valley. Can you imagine how I felt when I received that fateful telegram? The minimal, callous words printed on yellow paper. As an object, it seemed so unassuming, innocent even, lit by the sun as it shone in mockingly through the window. I remember my first reaction wasn't grief. No, no, he couldn't be dead, I thought. Not my Johnny, not my Johnny, not my Johnny. Sometimes I still can't believe it. I watch the gate, thinking any minute now he'll come in with firewood from the forest or he'll be playing on your fiddle in the parlor. I remember next the overwhelming grief. But then, soon after, came the anger and the fury. My son had been murdered. Another soldier had killed you in cold blood, and nothing would ever be done about it. Yet no, I stopped myself, because he was killed by another frightened boy, no different from my own son, who didn't know what he was doing. And there was a mother in Germany now, glad to know that her son was still alive. Finally, the guilt, the guilt seeping into my mind. It was my fault that you died, my fault. I allowed you to leave. I am so, so sorry. I dug your grave. A beautiful August evening in 1916 paints itself across my vision. You are standing there with your fiddle, and everyone's attention is on you. Music leaping over the forests and streams and skimming the lakes. People would ask why you didn't move to the city and join an orchestra. Of course, you told them that you could never bear to leave your family or your friends or the land of your birth. And then... Among the ancient songs and hymns that the mountains knew so well, we made time for one modern one. It was about the war that was grinding on in Europe. At the time, we were so sure of the words we sang. Then, America entered the war, and we allowed ourselves to forget the truth. Days pass, months, years. I sit alone. There is nothing but darkness. Darkness and the words. I didn't raise my boy to be a soldier. I brought him up to be my pride and joy. Who dares to place a musket on his shoulder? To shoot some other mother's darling boy. Let nations arbitrate their future troubles. It's time to lay the sword and gun away. There be no war today, if mothers all would say, I didn't raise my boy to be. A soldier.